Today we're making tool trays. Seven tools, four parts, one set of plans. To start, grab a piece of metal for the tray bottom. If we look at our plans, we see we need a piece that's 15 and a half inches by 12 and a half inches. Use a rule, a tri-square, and a scratch-all to mark your cut lines. Then use either compound shears or a foot shears to cut your metal down to size. We start the layout by marking the hems, which should be three quarters of an inch into the metal from the long edge on both sides. The sides are the next piece that we mark. These sides should be marked two inches from the hem line that you just made. Starting to lay out our tabs comes next. We mark these tabs three quarters of an inch into our metal from the short edge on both sides. Once you're finished marking all those lines, your metal should look something like this. To finish off the tabs layout, mark 45 degree lines at every intersection of your previous lines that you've made on the short edge of your metal. To do this step, have your tri-square at 45 degrees and then line it up where the two lines cross at one corner of your part. Then just flip your tri-square, move down the edge of your metal, find the next intersection and mark a line there. Repeat that process all the way down the edge of your metal and then do the same thing on the other side. Use your compound shears to cut out the triangles you just laid out on both sides of your metal to create your tabs. You're going to start forming this into your tray bottom by bending the hems first. Be sure the fingers of your brake clamp down right on top of your marked line. Clamping down at a slight angle is the most common mistake my students make when doing these sheet metal projects. If you do that, your bend will be at an angle which makes your part all wonky when you're finished. To make the hems, bend them as far as your brake will go. Then flip your metal over and clamp your fingers down on top of your metal to create a more rounded top to your bend. Should look something like this when you're done. Next, take your metal to an angle to flatten your hem completely with a hammer. You don't want to put a bunch of dents in your metal here, so take your time with this process. As I tell my students for this step, this is a tapping action, not an almighty Thor hammer action. Once you're done, your hem should look something like this. We return to the brake to continue forming our tray by bending the tabs to 90 degrees. And then we finish the tray bottom by bending the sides to 90 degrees as well. After all that, your tray bottom should look something like this. Grab some more metal because next up we make the ends of the tray. The ends of the tray should have an angle that starts from the side of the tray bottom and leaves a flat 2 inch section in the middle on the top. For this you need a piece of metal that's 7 inches wide by 4.5 inches tall. 
We always want to measure twice and cut once, so use a tape measure to measure the bottom between the two sides where your end will go, and then if it measures different than the plans, adjust your part dimensions as needed. With your metal cut to the correct size, you can just place that piece into your tray and mark where your sides come to. Then all you have to do is measure out the top portion and you'll have your endpoints to your angles. Use a straight edge and line it up with your two endpoints and then mark your angled line on both sides. Cut your metal on the angled lines you just mark and your ends are done. The corners of your ends may not sit perfectly in the rounded bend of your tray, which may cause your end to sit at an angle. If that's the case with your ends, just nip off those corners with your shears and you should be good. Now you're gonna attach your ends to the tabs of your tray bottom. I teach this project using a spot welder, so we put about 10 spot welds roughly evenly spaced across the tabs. Take your time here and make sure your parts are where you want them to be before you add that first spot weld or you basically scrap all your work up to this point. If you don't have a spot welder, you could also pop rivet these parts together. You would just need to plan and drill those holes prior to this step. Once both ends are attached, we move on to making the handle. You're gonna need to grab a piece of metal that's long enough to span the distance between the two ends that we just attached. Looking at our plans, and if we made everything correctly, the piece of metal that we need to have should be 15 and a half long by three and three quarters tall. You'll want to measure between your two ends before cutting your metal to size, and that length should be right around 14 inches. Once you have the right size piece of metal, just follow your plans for your layout and cut your metal to shape. Once your piece of metal looks like it should on the plans, Head over to the brake and bend and flatten your hems first before you bend your sides up to 90 degrees. The tab is the last piece you need to bend and it needs to be bent down. To do that, just clamp the tab in a vise and bend it by hand to 90 degrees. Last up, we need to spot weld the handle to the ends. Just like before, take your time and position your handle where it needs to be, which is in the top center of your ends, before applying the first weld. Once you're ready, apply a couple of spot welds to each tab to attach that handle to the ends. And if you've done everything well enough, you should have a tool tray that looks like this. Now you can use your tool tray to organize your work area, make less trips back and forth between your tool cabinet and your project, or use it for some convenient storage. And if you like this project, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss an upcoming video on how to make an entire toolbox for this tool tray to fit into.